No, oh, I can't speak. Blech. Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Today I wanted to film for you my January and February wrap up. Um, I'm hoping to do monthly rather than two monthly wrap ups of what I've been reading, um, but I'll explain during this video why I've ended up combining two months here. And I'm sorry that this video is a little bit into March. Uh, I've ended up recording this a little bit late, but I'm sure I'm, sure I'm not the only one that has had colds and problems with the snow and all the crazy stuff that's going on at the moment so and hopefully you can't hear too much of it uh, left on my voice I'm still a bit well anyway so the first book that I read this month was Lucy Shaw's Not Sure by Joe Bavington Jones the lady who wrote this it actually has the same literary agent as I do and uh, I actually won a competition to get this book so thank you very much Jo for that and she signed it, it's so nice to have a signed book she says um, life is better when you're laughing which is so sweet so anyway um, this is a really nice book to start the year um, in January with it's it's your holiday read, it's that kind of a book, it, it's just entertainment, it's just fun and it's one of those where it kind of doesn't matter if you haven't picked it up for a little while and you can't quite remember what happened because the tales in it stand by themselves. Um, it's The book is about a divorcee called Lucy Shaw at the beginning of the book, she's not long divorced and it's about her adventures, basically her adventures in life and love and it's just one of those really nice, you know, you want a uh, something easy, enjoyable, fun to read, um, it's very witty and it's so nice to have met a real life author and I know she's working on book two so really well done Jo, that's so exciting and an extra thing, I don't know if this is a weird thing to review, I don't know, but something I noticed reading this book is that the print quality is beautiful, it's one of those where when you're reading it the pages, the pages feel nice. It's good, good cardstock. Is it cardstock, paper stock? It, it's a good quality feeling book, and that matters. It feels nice on your hands. The second book that I read this year was Why Starting Solids Matters by Dr. Amy Brown. Um, this book, I was listening to the podcast, Sprogcast, which is presented by Karen Hall, who I think runs ENCT, uh, and Mark Harris, who's a really well-known male midwife who wrote, uh, is it called Men, Love and Birth? I think it is. Um, and he runs Birthing for Blokes. I've seen him do a, a talk before, actually, as well. He's a really, really interesting guy. Well, they're both very interesting. They were talking, in fact, I think they interviewed Amy Brown about this book. And I'm very interested in the politics of breastfeeding, that formula companies have a financial benefit from encouraging women to formula feed as opposed to breastfeed. And some of the things that perhaps are a little bit surreptitious that you may not realise are, are actually causing issues, causing social problems for uh, breastfeeding mothers. I was not aware that very similar things had happened within the solid foods market and that companies who are making baby foods, it's within their interest to get babies to eat foods younger. So whereas it's recommended babies start solids at six months, in fact in the past babies were starting solids at weeks old. So when I heard Amy Brown talking about these issues I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to read the book. These, um, this series, the White Matters series, um, which is produced by the publishers Pinter and Martin, they are very very tiny books, I mean this is, it's small and it's only 100 pages? No, 130-ish pages. Um, so it's a quick read, I read this in an hour, two hours maybe, but there is so much information in these books and it's great if you want to get a taster of a particular subject um, or you want to read something really quickly or do you know sometimes uh, non-fiction books are really expensive and you don't want to fork out on one of the bigger books these uh, White Matters books are 6 99 I think so it's, it's, it's a great way of introducing yourself to a subject, there's lots in the series, there's why breastfeeding matters, there's why doulas matter, there's all sorts of kind of birthing pregnancy related books in the series that just give you a snapshot, really really interesting, there's so much information here, I learned lots and lots from this book, really really enjoyed it, would thoroughly recommend that one. The next book I read was Flashman, now 
This is one that I've had sitting on my bookcase for ages and ages, and this is this bookcase here is the only bookcase that I have. Well, I've got a shelf upstairs, but the only bookcase that I have, because although I love books, I don't keep books. I read them and then I move them on, other than some that I really, really enjoy, <laughs> or non-fiction books. So, and I've, I've been trying to work through some of the non-fiction stuff on here. As I say, this has been on here for ages. My husband actually read it um, end of last year and said he enjoyed it, so I thought, I'll read it, see if it's any good, um, and then I can decide whether it's gonna stay or whether it's gonna go. I, I loved the style of this book. Um, I thought it was really well written, it just, it just isn't my kind of book. It didn't, it didn't keep me, it didn't grip me. And I found myself skim reading it just to get it over and done with because I just wasn't interested. I couldn't take in the story. I couldn't remember who was who and who had done what. And that is no kind of um, a bad review of the book because genuinely, I think it's a good book. I just, it's just not for me at all. So I won't be keeping this one. Um, it's about a man called Flashman who um, got expelled from school. He is from, uh, is it, uh, it's a character from Tom Brown's School Days. And the, it, it, the, the book kind of expands on this particular character from that book and talks about his adventures in the Middle East, um, in the army. And unfortunately, not my thing. And the problem with that, I started reading that, mm, must have been, quite near the beginning of January and it was one of those that because I wasn't that interested I just kept not getting into it I kept just leaving it on the side and not picking up a book and ending up doing other things instead of reading and so this book took me about a month to read it doesn't it takes me usually about two or three days to read a book of this length so that's why I've ended up combining months it's this book's fault <laughs> because it took me so long to read this I thought I can't just talk about two books Say my January reading, I read two books. You know, it's not going to look great for a booktuber, but so I thought I'd put two two together because this one took too long. I should have stopped really, but I'm one of those people. Once I've started a book, I can't I can't leave it. You know, I've started, I've committed to it, I'm going to finish it, which sometimes means that I get stuck on particular ones. The next book that I read after that was Perfume. This was one that my husband picked up uh, at the library when they're selling off old books for pennies and uh, because we liked the film and uh, so he picked it up because he thought that I might enjoy reading it. Um, the book is about a character who is born in the stinkiest part of Paris in horrible circumstances and uh, he, he has no, he doesn't, he doesn't smell of anything and he also has the most well-developed sense of smell that you could imagine. The whole book is so interesting the way that it's written that you can imagine the smells. It's a, a very sensory, very well described sensory book. I didn't explain that well but anyway. Um, and it's kind of a horror, uh, he's, well it's called Perfume, the story of a murderer, so you get the idea. Um, it's, it's one of those where I, I love the film and normally I like to read the book before I watch the film because I'd rather enjoy the book and be disappointed in the film than the other way around. Um, but it's one of those where although I'd seen the film first, uh, I loved the book and I thought they did a really good job of the film actually. And now that I, I've read the book, I think it, it was very close to, to the book. It's really good. I read it in a couple of days. I was really gripped. I loved the writing style. I loved the way, the way that things were described. And yeah, really good. And thank you to my husband for picking that up for me. Um, and he's now reading it. So I'll be interested to hear what he says about that one. The next book that I read is what, another one from clearing out these. Uh, so this has been sat on my bookshelf for a while, War of the Worlds. I've definitely read sections of this and I'm pretty sure that uh, I've heard parts of the old uh, radio play. Is it radio play, uh, audio book? I think it's a, it was a radio play, wasn't it, with all the rock music on. I've either heard all of it or part of it, and I really wasn't sure, but anyway, I thought, I'll read the book. I, uh, this is a really quick read, there's not many pages, um, and the chapter's are really short. I quite like short chapters sometimes, because it kind of keeps you reading. You're like, well, another chapter won't take a minute, <laughs> so I find it quite gripping. 
What I loved about this book is that although it was written in, I think, 1899, it could have been written yesterday and you kind of forget that the characters are Victorian characters because uh, aside from the fact that they're driving carriages and, and that kind of thing, it, honestly, the way people respond in this book just could have been now. If you don't know, the book is about um, a Martian landing in Surrey and basically just the aftermath of this, of, of, of the alien landing. And the, the way that the characters were either kind of terrified and running away or just not really taking it in and the fact that even though when the Martians landed a lot of people just did nothing and all the kind of confusion and just the the, the interaction of the people in the book that is exactly how people would respond to a Martian landing um, aside from the fact that I guess if there was a, a spaceship landing in Surrey it would explode all over social media and everybody would know within no time Whereas in this, obviously, people. Uh, <clears throat> whereas in this, a lot of people don't know what's happened because the news hasn't travelled and people are taken by surprise. Um, but really good book and a really quick read as well. So I thoroughly enjoyed reading that. Then I read The Handmaid's Tale. Now I watched the series of this uh, last year. hadn't heard of it. Um, probably should have done but hadn't uh, and the series was so good. I, I'm so bored of TV at the moment and a lot of things leave me really really disappointed but I loved The Handmaid's Tale. It's just brilliant, gripping, compelling, fantastic. So I desperately wanted to read the book. I bought this version, this one is second hand, I didn't want to buy the versions that have got the characters on from the series because I just prefer not to. Um, anyway, so I picked that up second hand and it was better than the series, it certainly wasn't a disappointment. What I liked about it is that some of the story arcs that are fleshed out in the series and given a lot more detail aren't in here and there are so many unanswered questions in this book. Also, the commander and his wife in this book are much older than in the series and that makes it so much creepier. And the thing that gets you about this book, there were so many points where I just thought, that could happen, that really could happen. It's so plausible, it would be so, not easy, but you know, you, you could just imagine all of those things being true and, and looking at how people just kind of are forced to comply. And it's, it's, uh, it's chilling, it really is. And you do finish the book kind of going, but, but what happened to her? Um, and what happened to this character and that character and oh my goodness um, and anybody who didn't see the series hasn't heard of the book it is a dystopian book about uh, a world where um, there are problems with fertility women just aren't falling pregnant whether that's to do with men or women isn't made clear and this society is built which I suppose in some ways is kind of traditional in that the women don't work the women stay at home etc but women are divided into roles so um, there are uh, rich women who are the commander's wives um, who just kind of swan about <laughs> um, and be wifely. There are Marthas who are like the cooks. Um, there are, and then there are handmaids who are there to bear children to the commanders. Um, and they just li live these weird lives and it's it, it there's a lot of stuff about um you know they don't have modern technology and they don't they're not allowed the women aren't allowed to read and there's lots of things you know that it, the society is very very controlled um and yeah but you just read it and just go oh wow that could happen um again another really brilliant book i loved this and I actually lent this to a friend who's read it over the last few days and she was messaging me going, oh my God, we've got to talk about this part and that part. And uh, then I'd forgotten that I wanted to make this video and I had to pop round to her house to pick this up because I'd forgotten and otherwise I would have just been inserting pictures of it. And kindly, she'd finished reading it and she let me have it back. So yeah, she enjoyed it too. So it's got two endorsements. The final book that I read in January, February. Sorry if I've been saying this month, during it. I don't know if I have been. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, you all know what I mean. The things I've been reading in January and February, obviously by the time I read this, it was February. Um, 
is Coast. Again, this has been on my bookcase. I have flicked through it before. A friend of mine bought me this, um, God, when the series came out, which was ages ago. And although I looked through it, I never actually properly, properly read it. Um, I loved the Coast series. It was so good. It's all about the um, coast of the UK. And I really enjoyed this. It actually, it looked like a bigger book than it is. There isn't much writing on every page. A lot of it is just stunning pictures of various areas. And I really enjoyed learning about some of the beautiful parts of the country that some of them I already knew about, some of them that I didn't. And I found myself reading it going, ooh, I'd like to go to, I don't know, let's pick some places. I can't even think now. Grimsby. And I'd like to go to um, Aberystwyth. And I'd like to go to the Wirral. And everywhere I read, basically, I want to go everywhere. That's my conclusion from this. But particular highlights of things that I really would love to see. Uh, I'd love to see the Giant's Causeway. Um, that just looks incredible, although in the book it actually says that it's overrated, but still, I'm still drawn to it. And um, I'd really love to go to the back of Kapok um, in Scotland. I have been before, and I just remember it as being the most incredibly beautiful, like, white silver beach. I want to go back because it was just gorgeous, but I want to explore a bit more. I've been to the Isle of Egg, which was fab and so gorgeous, but um, I really want to go to Sky and investigate that a little bit more because that looks awesome. So those were probably the particular ones where I read this and went, oh, I forgot about that. I'd really love to go back there. I'm glad that I finally actually sat and rather than dipping in and out of it like I had before, I actually sat and read through it and took it in a little bit more. Um, this one I will be keeping because this is a nice reference book for travelling around the UK. I will also be keeping Handmaid's Tale. Uh, my husband wants to read it and that was brilliant and uh, I have a few people who want to borrow that. Um, I'm undecided about War of the Worlds because I feel like it's a classic that my kids might want to read eventually. That's not a good reason to keep a book though. This is one that probably will go back on the bookshelf but will be turfed if something better comes along. I won't be keeping Flashman, Flashman's going. Perfume, uh, my husband's reading at the moment, so that's staying at least that long. Um, I'll be keeping Why Solids Matter because I like to keep non-fiction and it was a really interesting book. And of course, I'm gonna keep my signed copy of Lucy Shaw's Not Sure from my uh, author friend, Jo Bavington-Jones. Um, all in all, I've had a blast reading these books. The only negative one was Flashman. And like I said, it wasn't a bad book. It just didn't, it wasn't my thing. Um, so those were all really, really good books, if they're your kind of thing, I think. Every single one of those is good. So I've got all sorts of interesting books lined up for you for March. I've got a big list. It'll be interesting to see what I get through and which ones I pick out first. So soon I'll be telling you all about all of the amazing books that I've been reading this month and hopefully how much I've enjoyed them. Please like if you did. Please subscribe for more videos and I will see you all again soon.